Okay, so if you're watching the time lapse of this, you'll see that this is log number three that I had to cut through to find one that had an acceptable amount of uh, bore holes in it from uh, a boring uh, beetle larvae. This one's still got a couple, but I can make it work, so it's okay. Uh, because I need this for um, some lap siding. So what we're going to do today is uh, show, I, uh, show you how I make lap siding on my SMG bandsaw mill. Now this is not a high production process. I can make quite a bit of lap siding in a day, uh, but it's a, it's a bit of a slow process for me. I had a couple of different rigs that, you know, were automatic. You, you like a cradle, you set the log in, you moved it back and forth and all that. And, and quite frankly, I didn't like any of them. I, I bought two of them. Well, three really, but one was some Chinese piece of junk, but you know, sometimes the Chinese surprise you. And so, um, but I, I really wasn't happy with the, the setup of any of them. Um, I'm sure there's other ones out there that work well, but anyway, so what I found works well is this. And it was a hell of a lot cheaper than the lap siding setups. And works just as well, if not better, in a lot of ways. So, uh, these are, were 3 eighths when I cut them, this little lip. Uh, they're closer to 5 sixteenths now because they were green when I made them, they kind of shrank, but it doesn't really matter. So, you know. But, what does matter is the depth. This is a stop. So that you have the, every time you tilt the cant, uh, you get the, this, the same, basically the same angle. So if you've got a post setup that stops your logs, okay, on the back, you need to put the posts all the way down. So it's biting on the bottom part of the cant. If you don't, uh, when you tilt the cant and you're tilted against the post, you'll change the angles. So this, you know, that again makes it a slow process because you gotta, you're putting the cant right at, holding it right at the bottom, and then your dog goes in right at the bottom. So to make your first cut, or the way I do it, I'm sure that somebody has a better way, but this is the way I do it, and it seems to work fine, is I take my pieces, doing this one-handed, but just push this up with my knee, and the stop again allows me to get the same angle every time I've made these 10 and 12 feet and 14 feet long and all that, but quite frankly, um, it's easier to get more consistent sizing with eight foot pieces. So this piece is eight, three, eight two or eight three or something like that. So, and then I just dog in right at the, the bottom, nice and tight. And so you're ready to make your first cut because I got a relatively square, can't. It's actually a rectangle, but you know what I mean. The sides are parallel to one another. And uh, for the smart asses. So, uh, when I when I tilt it up like that to make my first cut, it offsets it so, and I'll show you here, it offsets it so I can make my first cut. And, and I try to keep it, I visualize it, I don't get out and measure it. And, like if you're trying to get exactly laser sized, laser perfect uh, siding from a bandsaw mill, um, you, A, you either got to lower your expectations or you should go, you know, purchase something that was factory made by a robot and lasers. Um, there is some variation to this, as careful as you're going to be. And you can spend a lot of time trying to get this as perfect as you know perfect and still not be perfect so are you happy with 85 percent 90 percent 95 percent of perfect like figure out where you're happy and you know once you attain that stop and start song or else you'll be here all friggin day so um you can see now it's it's tilted and I'm trying to have a coffee at the same time here i'm sorry guys been a windy day and I haven't had my coffee yet. The cup keeps flying around and tipping over my coffee. So from the, the sawing side, okay, you can see now already that that blade was level with the top. So what I'll do here now is I'll just unlock my, and I'm going to go for about one eighth on the back there like that. Lock that back in. Okay, and you can see how my first cut is going to be. So I just visualize about an eighth of an inch here, 
Okay, you don't want it to come to nothing. Most in most cases, the only time I bring it from this side to uh, a point, a perfect point, or to, to nothing, to zero or less, and sometimes I will do that. Like I'll bring it from here to about halfway, and that's if I need it on the bottom of a building for a starter strip, so the bottom one is sticking out. Because two of these on top of one another is too much. So if I need a starter strip at the bottom, so the first piece doesn't look flat against the building, because if you do that, it, it looks stupid. If you're, you know, this is for skirting, which is a little different because the bottom piece is going to be right on the ground with crushed rock up against it. But if you're on the side of a building, uh, you want to take half of this cut on this side to about zero right here, about two thirds away along. Okay. Squ square your can't and then start over and, you know, take a couple like that, square your can't start over and, and then use those as your starter strip. And that works well for me. So I got my pieces in. Okay, got a dog tight. We got a piece with an acceptable amount of <laughs> boring larvae holes. And uh, so I'll take a cut there now. And you'll be able to follow along from the back of the, the saw here. And um, this is a black spruce, so you need some water. Your, everything will gum up a bit. It's not as bad as pine, but anyway. Now, I actually, when I started sawing, I actually backed off and lowered it another sixteenth or so because I didn't like how narrow this piece was uh, for my use. So, and you can see that reflected here. I took it and lowered it a, a little, little bit more. Now this will get squared anyway and cut off. So, so anyway, there's your your first piece of lopsided. You see, there's a few holes in it, but they'll be covered by the next piece. It's for a skirting. And actually, it needs to be vented a little bit anyway, so uh, it's kind of damp, so I don't care about a couple of holes. If I really hate them, I'll, I'll use some latex on them. Uh, so there's your first piece of lap siding, okay? And you can see it's a little wavy. My blade, I, I was going to change my blade, but for this purpose, if it's a little rustic looking, it's fine. And uh, so... Just to give you an idea for those guys who like measurements, the bottom here is at about five eighths, okay? And I find that that's a pretty good ballpark. And the top here is at a quarter inch. Now, quarter inch. And now I'm in Canada, and you'll notice I'm not messing around with metric. Metric is cool for some things, but for the measuring stuff, I'm still an, an inch and feet guy, but then again, I'm older too. I remember when they brought that into the country. So there you go, five eighths. And I find that for, for most purposes, well, there's a, a, a bore hole there, but the next piece will, will cover that and that won't matter. And, you know, and uh, the next piece below that, we're at the bottom of the bore hole, I think. And if I got to, I can cut out a piece and I can, I can account for that. So anyway, your first piece is off. Now the next step, trying not to make this too long winded, too late. So here, I'll just move this out of the way, back over here to my other off cuts. And the next step of course is to remove these. And I'll just drop them on the ground. I try to pick them up and don't leave them outside so that they don't swell up and you know, I've been using those pieces for all this summer. I probably change them out every couple of years by the time they get, you know, wore out and beat up. And they cost me about uh, a penny and a half to make. So I, uh, 
just in case you're wondering, uh, I, I used to glue them and I used CBA glue and all kinds of stuff to make this piece here. And I tried taking a solid piece and routering them. Yeah, that's too much work. And so regardless, I don't care what kind of CVA glue you use outside, eventually it comes unglued. So now I use waterproof glue, which if it's outside too much is actually not waterproof. Maybe if you use marine glue or something. And I use crown staples. And that way, if the blade does hit the crown staples, it doesn't hurt the, the blade. Not really. They're too small. Um, the uh, You can't use nails. Nails, the, the blade does care. Okay. So anyway... I'll just leave them on the ground. So after you make your first cut, you got your square cant, you tilt it, you make your first cut. Now I know a lot of you guys out there know all this stuff already and I'm being a bit long-winded, but this is for the guys, the lame, layman doing it the first time. So now you have a, looks like a shed roof. You have an angle on your cant. So the next one, what you're doing is basically putting your cant straight again. Okay, and making a straight cut. So we're just gonna come back and on this mill here, we just unlock it here and wheel down. Sorry guys, I, I have to use two hands for this. Okay, and it looks about right there. Okay, now when I start sawing in, if I don't like it, I might adjust it a 16th, but that looks about right. Now I'm gonna go down just a little tiny bit more. Now, I'll tell you, I do this a lot faster on the fly when I'm not filming. Uh, it seems a lot more intuitive and it just seems to happen. That's too much. It just seems to happen uh, more organically. Um, after you've done it a bunch of times, okay, that's where I want it. So, oop, I keep putting my finger there, sorry guys. So, here, I'll make the next cut. Water on. You can see it's a little bit too thin. Now you can see, like, as soon as I made my cut, you can see it's a little thinner than I would like. And it's just a matter of a sixteenth of an inch, and away I go again. time lapsing this as well so I'm gonna make you know eight or ten more probably eight more out of this cant now this is a really nice piece the holes are just about all gone I'll get down past I'm down past the bore holes there now and it's a nice piece of lumber so uh, so that's how I make lap siding again it's about five eighths and it's a quarter inch and I just eyeball it. I don't get the tape out and measure it. If you have to do that at the beginning, I understand. Because when I first started making them, that's what I did. And then after a little while, I just... How I gauge it is I look on the narrow end of the piece of siding. And it's easier to gauge if that's the thickness I want or not than on the other side. And if you cut in too far and you're not happy with it, just keep going. Don't back up. In most cases, you just... You just muck things up. Use it somewhere else. Use it as a top piece. Hide it. There's always a place to hide a piece that's a little too thick or a little too thin. Up in a peak or an eave or as a starting strip. So, you know, they, they don't generally go to waste. Uh, unless you really muck it up bad. And then I just throw them down over the pile there and I burn them. So, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper to burn, you know, one out of a hundred. Because that's about all I burn, if that. Than it is to buy these Jesus things because right now wood siding is really expensive. And uh, so I'm going to continue to cut this. You'll see the rest on the time lapse. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll start, we'll go from there.
you want to see a pile of, of bugs in here, look at this here. Wow. It's just like Swiss cheese. It's, it's going to go in the fire. It's, it's scrap. So that's 12 pieces, uh, all total, I believe. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten pieces. Yeah, okay, I cut two pieces off. Right, ten pieces. I need nine, I believe, or nine. So it should just do it for today. I got a couple odds and sods down there already that I can use, so I'll be good. So. Uh, it took me about as long to cut the other eight, or maybe it took me way less time to cut the other eight. <laughs> it took me about five minutes to cut the other eight, or six minutes. And it took me about 12 or 15 minutes to, to, to show you, to cut the first two on the video. So it, it's a very quick process. Um, the If you don't like these burrs on your side, like these little, you know, uh, when this it dries on the building, you just rub your finger or a wooden dowel or something along, and they all pop off when they dry. So, and, and right now, this wood is pretty dry, but it's wet because I use water when I'm sawing, soapy water. And in the and in the winter, I'll use uh, fuel, any uh, water with any freezing. I don't use a lot of fuel. Fuel stinks and makes too much of a mess. I, I've done that in the past. I use mostly windshield washer fluid or uh, antifreeze. Now, like all these mills, you can't saw right to the bottom. You can only saw down an inch. I could probably get another one out, but it would be real thin on one end. So instead, I'm going to save that a, a little bit thicker and, and like the last one, cut a little crooked. And, and they tend to do that because the boards, when you're moving them, they're not, they, they warp a little bit like they, because you, do, you don't keep them clamped in. So uh, it changes the dynamic of it when, when this board gets thinner. So I'll use that for something. I'll shape it after. I'll saw it down to one inch. Or I'll do something with that. And, you know, I'll just put that off into my scrap pile. And uh, so what's best, what works best for this? Because these are six inches. It's going to be a four inch exposure. Right? So these will get, I mean, I'm sure you guys have all seen lap siding. But they'll get placed on the building. Something like that, okay? You know, so. And, um, you know, you guys all get the picture. So, uh, so that's how it's done, or that's how I do it. That's not, I guess that's not how it's done. That's how I do it. So, it works well. I, uh, hmm, I gotta remember now, because I'm videotaping. Uh, um, to pick these up or I'll lose them and it's going to rain here today so I tend not to leave my wooden stuff outside in the rain because you know it ruins it I've had this can't hook for years and it's because I don't leave it in the rain I mean I don't care about this so this could stay in the rain all day long I don't care I've, I've had to chop this out of the ice it, it doesn't affect it but anyway so uh that's it so if you guys got a better way to do it, I'd love to hear it in the comments. And um, I hope uh, you guys that have a sawmill, and, and actually, just to, 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 I've done a similar thing with my Alaska sawmill. If I can find a thing, I'll show you how I did it. 
but you can do a similar thing with the last sawmill even although you lose a lot of wood in the kerf of the chain so anyway you, but you can do it but uh so you guys out there with small bandsaw mills or something like that uh i hope this helps it's a very quick and affordable way to do it i'm sure there's probably other videos on youtube i that show a very similar thing um the uh but this is the way i do it i find this works very well i generally set these at three eighths if they shrink a little bit it doesn't matter and uh that's worked well for me and, and i have four of these so if i have to go you know one two three four bunks i can support all the way along although when it's a real stiff cant and it's real high i still only support it in two or three and then as the the cant gets smaller and starts to turn more into a wispily piece of lumber i support it more to get so it doesn't go wavy on me so anyway i hope this helps you guys uh please like and subscribe if uh if you if you're so inclined i'd appreciate it and uh look forward to uh reasonable helpful comments in uh and i try to answer them all so have a great day cheers